All right, everyone, welcome to another discussion video. Today, I'm going to be looking at some other options in order for players to be able to, I would say, mitigate the stress that can come with the grind. So, a past few videos of mine, we've been on this discussion basically on what it means to take a break from Tom Clancy's The Division 2. And many of us have kind of concluded that there are many other things that you can do with your life other than grinding all the different aspects of the game because it seems like the trend that a lot of these looter shooters have taken is to keep an unending grind to keep players constantly playing their games. In fact, recently, somebody here on a comment said it seems like Destiny Warframe has also, these two games have also taken on these kind of grind, uh, you know, long-term, never-get-out-of-the-game style, uh, you know, paradigm that it seems players are starting to get tired. But I think if you like any of these games, you can still continue to enjoy them, but I think taking a break is actually something that will help with that. And if you want to take a break, I feel that there are other games that will not, you know, ask for too much of your time investment that you can kind of start playing. And in most cases, they're going to cost you very little. Now, the very first recommendation that I have on my list, if you either have any of the PC or console platforms, is the Assassin's Creed series. Now, to be very fair, I have not played any of them except Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And I just recently beat the main story of Odyssey here, 55 hours. And my progression, it still says my main progression is 86% because I still have to take out some side, you know, set of bad guys. But I finished the main plot and I still have a lot of end game to go. Right now I'm player level 40 and I think the max level is like 99. So I probably still have double this amount of time, if not more, to play if I go ahead and purchase the DLC. Now, one of the good things about a game like this is I can put it down and come back and I would not have missed out on anything. There isn't the stress of everybody else kind of getting ahead of me, unlike if I was playing like Tom Clancy's The Division or if I was playing something like Destiny 2, where if I was coming back, I'd be like, oh no, everyone has gotten all these weapons and everyone has been able to make this progression and it'll be hard for me to keep up. So what you're gonna probably enjoy from this is in the time that you're waiting for new content or fresh content to drop from your favorite grind game, Division, Warframe, or Destiny, you can play a game like Assassin's Creed in the middle and it's gonna provide you a lot of RPG fun without having to feel like you're being left behind. Another aspect, too, to something like this is looking into even, if you're a PC player, getting some console games to be able to enjoy. Now, I know many PC players may, you know, in, in the open, yell and shout at console games, but really many PC players do own consoles because they most likely transition from console to PC or they bought a, P a console to be able to play a specific exclusive. And in my opinion, I think the exclusives that Sony has to offer are far superior than what, than what Microsoft has been able to do. I'm not knocking on Microsoft. I'm just saying that the last uh, console war, Microsoft actually made more money. Sony spent more. So what you need to do is basically leverage all the money that Sony spent and come into their PlayStation exclusive library. You can go on the PlayStation store and, you know, click on PlayStation hits. And this is going to show you a lot of games that are selling well on the PlayStation. Now, they're not all exclusives. Don't get me wrong, but they're big games that PlayStation and Sony has basically, you know, handpicked because of their sales, their reviews and a lot of the raves around them. So that way you don't really need to be looking for somebody to recommend some game for you like, hey, what should I play? What should I play? And the good thing about this is even if you're a PC player, you can come here and see some titles that also have a PC version. And so you can look at it and say, well, it looks like these, you know, these titles are actually good and I'll go ahead and buy it. Another layer of this is also some of these so-called in quote PlayStation exclusives that are, you know, rumored or now coming to PC that you can actually keep an eye out for. An example is Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon Zero Dawn is one of those games that's basically going to be released on PC very soon. And the developers have talked about working on a second Horizon Zero Dawn. We don't know when that's going to come out. We don't know if they're going to try to use it to pull in maybe the, you know, the PC audience into the market to purchase. But this is a very good place to go find good games or games that have been, you know, vetted to play. Now, if you're on console, I want to also throw something your way. Now, I know many people don't have a gaming PC and all of that, but one really interesting thing that I've seen on the PC platform, Steam, 
you uh you play um even you know crazy as it sounds ea's origin is they always in, in you know once in a while will give out free games i know epic games does free games i think one every week now or two every week but a lot of people are still quite you know you know a little anxious about epic games so i'm not recommending them even though i'll be the first to tell you that my assassin's creed games you're seeing here i purchased them on epic games because i'm really not a steam loyalist or an epic games loyalist i just buy with who's selling the cheapest that's basically how i go so they were on sale and i purchased them they're actually still on sale right now and epic games is actually giving a ten dollar credit if you actually want that no one's paying me to say that that's just general knowledge out there and then another thing too i would recommend you is you know get steam get you play and if you want to get epic get them and you can go into where you have a lot of free games and you'll be able to see what games are you know potentially free what games are coming i think just the other day lego ninja go i think that was the name of the game uh, was yeah there it is lego ninja go video movie was a game that was given for free everybody got to get a free copy if you go into maybe even my epic games library you'll see that the arkham games were also given as a freebie one time it's been a while but you know it's probably not there and this leads me into some other games that you can play and these are the games in the arkham series batman arkham asylum arkham city arkham origins and arkham knight if you have not played any of these games you definitely have to give them a try the reason I even say this is because these games were made such a long time ago, but they will compete with any AAA game right now that you bring to them. I'm not saying that they'll be better, but they will compete. They have very solid mecha you know, mechanics. They have very good plots, very good progression, and you don't have to worry about you know, your progression getting stale. In fact, I would say Arkham City and Arkham Knight are so much more modern than a lot of the games that we've actually seen. In fact, you can compare this these games to games that were just released maybe two years ago, whereas these games were released five, in some cases seven, or even older in their own timeline. Now, yes, Arkham Asylum is a little, you know, I would say dated in its in a sense, but it is still a good, solid game nonetheless. Now, shame on me. I have not beaten mine yet. It's just the only one I haven't beaten. I don't know why. I guess because I played the others first and then I came back to the dated one, like I said. But I've beaten Arkham City like four times. I've beaten Arkham Origins like three times. I've beaten Arkham Knight like, uh, you see, yeah, 217 hours on a single player game. And this is basically something that, I, you know, I can tell you and I can vouch for for sure. And then if I wanted to come in here and actually nitpick, I would say Far Cry 4 is another game that really, you know, and that I really enjoyed. Right now I have Far Cry 5 and I have Far Cry New Dawn. I can't stand Far Cry New Dawn because they went RPG on it uh, where, you know, the, the enemy health and level is a thing in that game. I, ho I just hope they don't do that in future Far Cry games because I'm not going to touch it if they, did, if they do that. I already played The Division for the grind, so I'm not dealing with that. So I'll pick up Far Cry 4 and recommend that to you because I've played this game. Uh, God of War, beaten it three times. Solid, solid game. If you don't have a PlayStation, uh, this is one of those things where, you know, you got to look for a cheapo PlayStation to play this game because I don't think this game is going to come to PC. Uh, I don't think the development team is actually working on something like that. I think they'll be working on a new game to come out maybe with the P not maybe, but most definitely to come out maybe two years or three years into the PS5. So this is, you know, my recommendation list or my recommendation strategies for players who are in the grind to be able to kind of disconnect from that for a little bit and enjoy other games. There's so many other good games that are out there. And I know The Division is a game that seems to demand a lot of your time. But to be very honest with you, at this point in the game, you're only supposed to be playing this game. If you've played enough of the game, I think you're supposed to be playing this game more in a casual sense. As you know, yucky as that sounds, that you will, you as a hardcore, staunch Division player will ever be subject, you know, will, ev will it ever be suggested around you that you play the game casually. I think that's basically where we are right now because many of us have reached end game. We're on level 40. Unless they bring another player level to scale, then definitely, you know, we just need to kind of take our time. And I know some people are probably lacking in exotics or some things. I just have to tell you that one thing about exotics and stuff is you may probably never get a, a, a particular exotic. It's just the curse of the RNG. But you just never know. You might farm and get it. You might not farm and get it. Somebody might get it and eventually just drop it for you as you're going. And so to reduce your anxiety, I'd say disconnect. Look at other games that are there. Even go back to your own gaming library. I guarantee you, maybe you, you have PlayStation Plus and you've been downloading all the free uh, PlayStation Plus games and you've not even taken a look at them. Why not take a look at them? Why not download them? Try them out. Maybe you hate them. Maybe you like them. Hey, 
you know, you'll probably find something to do with them. I didn't even recommend Uncharted series 1, 2, 3, and 4. And even Uncharted Lost Legacy is also good. The Last of Us, the first one is good. The second one hasn't come out. Um, as controversial as the second one is probably right now based on talk and, you know, will be when released. The first, The Last of Us game was actually pretty good. So this is basically my, you know, little list that I'm making right now. I hope you guys benefit from this. I know the, the grind can get really tasking, but TU10 doesn't come out for a little bit. And while you're waiting, you can pick one of these up and start messing around with. All right. Thank you so much for your time and audience. I appreciate you guys for watching the video. Leave comments in the comment section. Leave your game suggestions as well. And I'm sure somebody will be happy to kind of see what other division agents are playing. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all hopefully soon. Peace.